former U.S. congressman has called for Pacific Island Forum leaders to be more open to Guam and to help the island territory stand up to the U.S. There are calls for unity and support from Guam advocates fighting for the right to self-govern, for radiation exposure compensation and propose long-range missile testing. This is part two of an interview with Pacific Centre for Island Security Chairman and former U.S. Congressman Robert Underwood, where Alicia Foon asked him, when is Guam part of the U.S. and when is it part of the Pacific? Guam is part of the United States when the United States needs it to be. <laughs> so for some purposes, for military purposes, there's a lot of conversation about we're defending the U.S. homeland. When you talk about political status, they say, no, you're not really a part of the United States. You're an unincorporated territory of the United States. When you talk about, uh, you know, RICA or uh, nuclear compensation, they'll say, well, you're far away. You're not really part of the same stream that uh, New Mexico and Utah and, uh, and Arizona and other places are. So, so it's, it's, a, it's a convenient uh, definition about being part of the United States uh, uh, when it's necessary to achieve some grander purpose, but not really part of the United States when you're trying to achieve a Guam-specific purpose. So the Guam-specific purpose in this instance is RICA. The Guam-specific uh, 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 interest is political status change. The Guam-specific interest is some form of political equality. Well, all those things are not part of the conversation because you're not really part of the United States. But when it comes to defense issues and projecting uh, American uh, uh, authority and strength in, in that part of the world, well, we're doing it from the United States of America, better known as Guam, USA. You, you still hit it just right. When is Guam part of the United States and when isn't it? And that's, that's the point. So, you know, uh, in Congress, we had a representing Guam, a retired Marine Corps general, the first uh, non-Caucasian general in, uh, in the U.S. Marine Corps in history, Ben Blass. And Ben Blass used to say, we are equal in war, but we're not equal in peace. How can Pacific leaders and the Pacific Islands Forum support the people of Guam? Moving forward, I, I have to say this, our Pacific Island neighbors, the independent Pacific Islands, have to be more open to Guam, more solicitous of listening to people from Guam. Because right now, even things like asking for associate membership in the Pacific Island Forum, which the U.S. sort of... Uh, and threw cold water on, and then after they were embarrassed by, you know, some different kind of movements, they finally said, okay, we support uh, associate membership in PIF for uh, Guam. But I'm not sure that the Pacific Island nations themselves, when they talk about the Blue Continent, when they talk about all these great initiatives that they have in mind for the, uh, the island Pacific, do they really include a U.S. territory like Guam? Or uh, are, they, uh, are they giving us uh, the same kind of treatment we get from the U.S. government, which is we're sort of, we're part of the United States, but we're an unincorporated part of the United States. We're part of the Pacific, the blue continent, but we're not really part of the decision-making for the blue continent. That's a serious issue. So I, I hope that uh, people's minds and hearts are open to that because you have places like Guam. You have places like the Northern Marianas. You have places like American Samoa and places, uh, you know, uh, New Caledonia, French Polynesia. You have places that have a kind of a unclear relationship to their uh, colonial power. And what is the island Pacific going to say about that?